Section 12 of A Scientific and Practical Treatise on American Football for Schools and Colleges by Henry L. Williams and Amos Alonzo Stagg. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 12. Plays with Diagrams, Part 3. 47. Running Mass Wedged Through the Center to send FB through the center on a running mass play directly behind C, the ends and backs start forward the instant the ball is snapped. The guards lift their men back and out from the center, while C endeavors to force his man straight ahead of him. LH and KH dash in and attach themselves behind C on each side of him. FB springs forward at the same moment, and receiving the ball on a pass at X from QB, who slips to one side, dives in directly behind C with head down. At the same instant that FB reaches the line, the ends close in on either side of him directly behind the halfbacks. QB throws himself in the rear of FB, and all push forward with the greatest possible force in a solid and tightly formed mass. The vital point in the play is that all strike the line at as nearly as possible the same instant and form a tightly massed wedge, which is driven directly through the line. Note, by drawing the ends in to LE2 and RE2, they may be enabled to strike the line ahead of the halfbacks, in which case the latter will attach themselves on either side of FB as he rushes forward. The wedge must never cease pushing until the man with the ball is actually downed and absolutely held. 48. Running mass wedge between guard and center. To send the running mass wedge through the line between LG and C, the halfbacks draw back slightly before the ball is snapped to LH2 and RH2 in a line with FB in order to give the ends more time to reach the opening ahead of them and also to enable themselves to gain greater headway before striking the line. RE also works over slightly to the left to RE2. At the instant the ball is snapped, all the men behind the line dash straight for the opening in the lines indicated. C lifts his man back into the right, and LG forces his man back into the left. LE passes through the opening ahead at an angle, and strikes the opposing C with his full force, while RE, crossing directly behind him, strikes the opposing guard in a similar manner. Footnote when the ends find difficulty in reaching the opening ahead, they may follow the halfbacks as in the preceding play. End footnote. At the same moment, FB with his head down and the ball held as before, strikes the opening so made immediately behind the ends, with the greatest possible force, the halfbacks firmly attaching themselves to his flanks as he receives the ball at X and forcing him through. RT leaves the line as the ball is snapped, as shown for LT in diagram 13, and together with QB, closes in behind FB. All mass firmly together as before and drive directly through the line. LT and RG hold their men and force them out. 49. Running mass wedge directly at the guard. To send the running mass wedge into the line directly behind LG. Very little change is made from that shown in diagram 47, except that the play is directed at the guard instead of C. C and LT force their men back to the right and left respectively, as the ball is snapped. The halfbacks dash forward in the lines indicated, and attach themselves to the flanks of LG with the greatest possible force. The end strikes the formation so made at that same instant, and each grasps FB from the side as he rushes in behind LG with his head down, while RT and QB throw their weight in behind FB as shown in diagram 13, and all plunge forward in a mass pressed firmly together. The success of the play depends upon the formation of a compact mass which continues to hold firmly together after it strikes the line, and in which all push with their whole weight. 50. Running mass wedge directly at the tackle. To send the running mass wedge into the line behind the tackle, 
the same principle is carried out as that shown in diagram 49. The instant the ball is snapped, all the men behind the line start for RT in the directions indicated at utmost speed, FB receiving the ball at X on the pass from QB. LH and RH strike the flanks of RT at full speed on either side, while the ends, QB and LT, mass on the sides and rear of FB as he strikes the line, as shown in diagram 47. The mass must continue its closely locked formation and push directly down the field. LE works in slightly to LE2 before the ball is put in play. LT leaves the line the instant the ball is snapped, as if he himself were to run with the ball, follows directly behind FB and overtakes him if possible before he reaches the line, in order to push him as he strikes. 51 free opening play from the center of the field the men are lined up at the center of the field as shown in the cut from five to six feet apart a signal makes it understood around which end the play is to be made and each player selects the man on the opposing side whom it has been prearranged that he shall block c puts the ball in play by kicking it while still retaining it in his hands and passes it back to l h in case the play is to be made around the right end. At the same instant, the entire rush lines move diagonally toward the right as one man, and dash into the opposing rushers as they meet midway between the two lines. RH and FB proceed LH to interfere for him as they reach the end, and all sprint at topmost speed. Note, the rushers must see to it that they do not betray their looks before the ball is put in play, the direction in which the run is to be made. 52. Double pass opening play from the center. To make the double pass opening play around the left end, the rushers are placed as indicated on the center line about two yards apart, leaving an interval of about ten yards between C and QB, and five yards between QB and RG, while the backs are about three yards behind the line. The instant that QB puts the ball in play, C, LG, LT, LE, and LH dash toward the center of the field in lines nearly parallel with the cross lines, preserving their distances from one another. QB makes a long pass to LH at X as he advances toward him on the run. The men to the right of QB start directly down the field, swinging in slightly toward the center to block the oncoming rushers. QB and FB stand still. LH passes close in front of FB, carries the ball in his right arm, and passes it to FB to take it as he rushes by. FB and QB then instantly start in the opposite direction and sprint at utmost speed to encircle the opposing team which has been drawn in toward the center. Note. From this same formation, QB may pass the ball either to FB or RH for a kick, in which case the rushers will all run straight down the field instead of across in the lines indicated in the cut. 53. Opening play from the center with team divided. The men are arranged as indicated in the diagram on either side of the field the rushers being about two yards apart and the ends about five yards from the sidelines. FB is placed about two yards and the halfbacks about three yards behind the center line. QB looks to the one side and then to the other in order to render the opposing team uncertain whether the ball is to be passed to the right or left or to FB for a kick down the field. He then puts the ball in play as shown in diagram 51 and makes a long pass to LH, who receives it on the run at X, following it immediately to make the play safe, in case of a wild pass. The instant the ball is in play, every player in the field will dash forward in the lines indicated, except RE, who stands still in his position or drops flat upon the ground close to the sidelines, unobserved by his opponents as the other three men dash across the field. It is of no consequence if only a small advance is made. All depends upon the quickness of the following play for success. 
every man upon the team rushes to his position in the line and without waiting for a signal the ball is immediately snapped and a long pass made by q b straight across the field to r e who catches the ball upon the run and has the entire field before him note this play is only practical when q b can be relied upon for a long and accurate pass and when the wind is not unfavorable fifty four princeton opening wedge from the centre of the field footnote the wedge formation at the centre of the field originated at princeton and a footnote to send the wedge straight down the field from the centre the men form in the positions shown in the cut as closely and firmly bound together as possible at the signal c puts the ball in play by touching it with his foot and passes it back to q b who is immediately behind him ready to receive it as the ball is put in play the entire wedge rushes forward in a compact mass preserving its formation and endeavors by mere force of weight and momentum to advance the ball as far as possible straight towards the opponent's goal q b upon receiving the ball places it at his stomach clasps it tightly with both hands and charges forward with head down while f b throws in his entire weight from behind note it is a vital point that all the men keep their feet and run in a compact mass preserving the formation fifty five Yale Modification of Princeton Wedge This wedge differs in one very important respect from the preceding. Instead of being a part of the wedge formation, the guards are placed outside of the wedge, directly abreast of C. The instant the ball is put in play, LG and RG spring forward in advance of the wedge, and meet the opposing guard in center midway between the wedge and the point from which their opponents start. LG jumps directly into his man and attempts to throw him to the left, while RG, meaning the opposite C in the same manner, attempts to throw him to the right. The wedge advancing immediately behind is thus saved the shock of being struck by the opposing guards under full headway. The wedge may charge thus at an angle slightly to the right or left, the guards taking the opposing C and RG, or C and LG, as the case may be note as it is highly desirable that the men without the wedge be swift and dashing it may be found more advantageous to place the tackles or to comparatively light men in these positions while the guards are retained within the wedge itself fifty six princeton split wedge the formation is precisely the same as that shown in diagram fifty four the ball is put in play as before and the wedge advances straight down the field as the oncoming rushers strike it the wedge suddenly opens at some point previously agreed upon and allows q b who carries the ball to break through and dart down the field the opening usually selected is that between guard and tackle as shown in cut a in this case the guard and tackle separate and force their opponents to the left and right respectively while q b with his head down and f b pushing him from behind forces his way through and breaks clear of the wedge this opening may be made either to the right or left and at any point desired fifty seven yale split wedge the formation is very similar to that of diagram fifty six but the two lines are arranged so that the parallel sides are nearer together the half-backs and ends brace themselves well back at arm's length from the men directly ahead of them precisely as shown in diagram forty one q b stands well back between the half-backs as shown in the cut the guards tackles and half-backs stand with toes pointing straight forward to leave a narrow unobstructed lane between the two lines down which the ball is to be rolled on its side c places the ball on its side between his legs and puts it in play by touching it with his toe the ball the while firmly held under his hand and rolling it back at the same moment the entire wedge surges straight ahead q b will have had just time to secure the ball 
turn toward RH, when the charging rushers will be upon the apex of the wedge. LH then instantly turns square to the right, and seizing RH by the arm, knocks him directly out of the wedge on the opposite side. LE follows immediately behind LH. FB attaches himself to RE and the new wedge, with RH as its apex, and QB directly in the center with the ball, dashes off at an angle of about 45 degrees to the original direction. C. Carré. Note. The wedge may split either to the right or left. It is very important that the second wedge preserve a loose yet firm formation so that all may run at utmost speed. 58. Side play from wedge at the center. The formation is precisely as shown in diagram 54. C puts the ball in play as before and passes it back to QB, and the entire wedge advances with the rush. QB quietly transfers the ball to LH unperceived, under cover of the wedge formation, and as the oncoming rushers strike the apex, LE and FB, who has changed his position to FB2, slip by on the side in the lines indicated to block the opposing RT and RE, while LH darts suddenly to the left, passing behind LE and FB, and attempts to encircle the end, sprinting at utmost speed. Note. The ball may be passed by QB to either of the halfbacks or ends, and the play made as shown. A play is sometimes made closely allied to this, in which QB remains in the wedge until after it has encountered the opposing rushers, and then suddenly darts out from behind, with a single interferer, trusting to his speed and the unexpectedness of his appearance to carry him safely around the opposing team. 59. Hard running wedge with loose formation. The men are formed in a wedge shaped as above, from three to four feet apart, with the half backs in the center. C puts the ball in play by kicking it and passing it back to one of the half backs, and the whole formation dashes forward at utmost speed without massing together, preserving the arrangement as far as possible. Each man in the line dashes directly into the opposing rushers as they meet the wedge, while the half-back with the ball, assisted by his fellow, endeavors to slip through the most favorable opening which the open formation shall offer. The play may be directed straight ahead or to the right or left. Note, if the entire formation, without changing its arrangement, withdraws ten yards behind C and comes dashing forward on the run, C putting the ball in play just before it reaches him, the play may be made even more effective. 60. The Harvard Flying Wedge QB stands with the ball in the center of the field. FB stands from 5 to 10 yards behind QB and a little to the right. The remainder of the team is divided in two sections. Section number one is composed of the heaviest men in the line, and is drawn up from 20 to 30 yards from the center, back into the right, facing QB. Section number two is composed of the lighter and swifter men, drawn up 5 or 10 yards back into the left of QB. Section number one has the right of way, the others regulating their play to its speed. At a signal from QB, section number one dashes forward at utmost speed passing close in front of QB. At the same moment, FB and section number two advance, timing their speed to number one. Just before the sections reach the line, QB puts the ball in play, and as they come together in a flying wedge and aim at the opposing RT, or straight down the field, passes to RH and dashes forward with the wedge. A slight opening is left in front of QB to draw in the opposing RT. See small cut. As opposing RT dives into the wedge, LH and QB take him. RE and LE swing out to the left to block opposing RE. At the same moment, RH puts on utmost speed and darts through opening between LH and RE. Note, the arrangement of the men is arbitrary. The wedge may be directed against any point desired. Its strength lies in the fact that the men are under full headway before the ball is put in play. 
61. Guard drops back and bucks the center. To send RG to buck the center, at a given signal, RG runs back from the line and takes the position at RG2, while RH jumps in and fills temporarily the position of RG. As soon as RG is in his position, the ball is snapped. RG dashes forward, receives it at X, and plunges into the opening to the right of C with his head down, striking the line hard. An opening in the line is made as shown in diagram 5. RE, FB, LH, LE, and QB all rush in behind RG, starting forward in the lines indicated as the ball is put in play and push, as in diagram 21. LT, LG, and RT play as in diagram 5. Note, the above play is valuable for a light team if they happen to have a heavy and powerful guard. After RG has been sent at the center once or twice, it will be very effective to have QB pass the ball to LH instead of RG for a run around the right end, as shown in diagram 8. RG will then proceed LH as does RH in diagram 8. 62. Guard through his own opening on the same side. To send RG through his own opening to the right of C, the fullback and halfbacks are placed back as if for a kick, as shown in the cut. FB assumes every appearance of being about to receive and kick the ball. As the ball is snapped, RG jumps slightly back and toward QB, allowing the opposing LG, who is eager to break through and stop the kick, to pass through the line outside of him. QB instantly hands the ball to RG, who plunges back into the line through the opening left vacant by the opposing guard, with QB directly behind him. C endeavors to force his man well to the left as he snaps the ball. A similar play is less successfully attempted at the tackle. The old play of having the end lie well out and receive the ball on a long pass from QB is now almost absolutely discarded. Note. Care must be taken by QB not to make a forward pass. 63. Fullback feints a kick and runs around the end. To send FB around the end on a feint to kick, RH and LH draw from 1 to 2 yards behind their original positions, while FB moves over toward the right to FB2, from 2 to 3 yards in the rear of RH. When the ball is put in play, QB passes carefully and accurately to FB, who, with coolness and deliberation, without betraying by the slightest glance or uneasy movement that he is about to run, goes through the preparatory movement of being about to kick. All the men in the line block their opponents as usual, with the exception of RE. The latter allows his man unimpeded progress straight for FB, simply forcing him to run to the inside of him as he passes, or takes the first extra man in the line outside of RT. As the opposing LE is almost upon him, coming forward at full speed, FB suddenly darts to the right in order to dodge LE, which is easily done, and dashes around the right end. The entire success of the play will depend upon the coolness and skill of FB in waiting until the last moment before dodging to the right and in not allowing his ultimate design to be prematurely discovered. In case the opposing tackle succeeds in breaking through the line, RH must take him and force him to the inside. 64. Fullback feints a kick and halfback darts through the line. To send RH through the line on a feint to kick, LH and FB drop back. RH remains in nearly his original position, while FB assumes every appearance of being about to receive and kick the ball. Just before the ball is snapped, RH draws in slightly nearer to RH2. Upon receiving the ball, QB instantly passes it to RT, who is close to the line, and plunges directly through the opening between C and RG with head down and the ball held as shown in diagram 5. The opposing guards and center are all intent upon breaking through and stopping the kick, and are entirely unprepared for a dash into the line. As the ball is put in play, RG throws his man suddenly and violently to the right, 
whilst he throws his man in a similar manner to the left and R. H. darts through the opening so made without assistance or interference. Note. This play is also frequently made between guard and tackle. 65. Criss-cross play from the sideline. To perform the criss-cross play when the ball is out of bounds at the sideline, C places one foot well within the field, keeping the other out of bounds and faces the opponent's goal with the ball in his hands, ready to put it in play by touching it to the ground and passing it back between his legs to QB. RG stands as near the sideline as possible, directly behind C, out of the way of QB. FB stands about two yards behind QB, while LH occupies a position three or four yards behind the line and from ten to fifteen yards from the side of the field. The remainder of the men stand closely and solidly together in the line. When the ball is put in play, QB passes quickly to FB, and both start at utmost speed for the center of the field in the lines indicated. FB runs close in front of LH and gives him the ball as he passes, upon which LH instantly starts back in the opposite direction. Just before FB reaches LH, the guards and center swing around to the side and sweep their opponents a yard or two into the field, leaving a narrow lane by the side line down which LH may pass, as shown in cut A. The play can be made with equal success when the ball is down within a yard or two of the sidelines. Note, LH must take the greatest care not to step over the boundary line as he runs. 66. Harvard Line Wedge to form the line wedge upon the right side. At the given signal, RH, RE, LH, and LE dash toward the right and form a wedge directly behind RT, occupying the positions RH2, RE2, LH2, and LE2, and taking a formation similar to that shown for LE, LH, RE, and RH in diagram 41. C puts the ball in play the instant the men reach their positions, and QB passes to FB, who receives the ball at X on the run. LT leaves his position the instant the ball is snapped, and follows directly behind FB. Upon receiving the ball, FB dashes in behind the wedge with head down, and all plunge forward, preserving a compact mass. LG blocks his man hard while C and LG block their men and endeavor to force them to the left. As soon as QB has passed the ball, he should dash forward to throw his entire weight behind the wedge. See note, diagram 68. 67. Left end between guard and center from the line wedge. This play is a modification of the one shown in diagram 66. When the wedge has been sent forward several times in succession for short gains of from two to five yards, and the opposing LG has found the way to dive into it low down between RT and LH to stop it, at the signal for the play, RG allows his opponent to break through to the right as the ball is snapped without resistance, and then forces him farther to the right. C blocks his man and forces him hard to the left. QB then instantly passes the ball to LE, instead of FB, who immediately darts through the opening between RG and C, followed by FB and LT. QB helps C block his man and force him to the left. The rest of the wedge plunges in behind RT when the ball is snapped, as before. See note on diagram 68. 68. Faint wedge and full back between left guard and center. After the play shown in diagram 66 and diagram 67 have been worked a few times in succession, RG and RT on the opposing side may find that they can accomplish nothing, as the wedge is upon the other side of the center and run around in order to help block it. In that case, the wedge will form at the signal and immediately dash in behind RT as before. QB passes FB the ball the instant it is snapped, but... FB, instead of plunging in with the ball behind the wedge, as shown in diagram 66, darts through the line between C and LG. 
C lifts his man back and to the right. LG forces the next opponent in the line to the left. QB follows directly behind FB. Note. In case the opposing LG runs around to block the wedge, FB should pass through between LG and C. If RT goes, or RT and QB, he should pass between LG and LT. Note. A strong sequence of movement in the series is as follows. 1. Play as in diagram 66. 2. If LH, RH, and QB mass in front of the wedge, play as in diagram 67. 3. If they mass close in behind the center, play as shown in diagram 69. 4. If the opposing RG or RT runs around to block the wedge, play as in diagram 68. 5. At all other times, play as shown in diagram 66. 69. Faint wedge and tackle around the end. At the signal, the wedge is instantly formed as shown in diagram 66, and as the men reach their formation, C snaps the ball. As the ball comes back, FB dashes in behind the wedge in the same manner as shown in diagram 66 when carrying the ball, and the entire formation plunges forward behind RT. LT leaves his position in the line the instant the ball is put in play, receives the ball at X from QB as he passes, but instead of following behind FB, as in diagram 66, swings slightly out around the wedge and the line indicated at utmost speed. The opposing LE may very likely be deceived into thinking the play shown in diagram 66 is being attempted, and dive into the wedge where he may be repinned by RH. If the opposing LE does not dive into the wedge, RH and RE should dash away to the right ahead of LT the instant he reaches them, to interfere. RH should run directly for the opposing LE, while RE takes the first free man outside of RT. See note, diagram 68. End of section 12.